So, welcome back to Green Box Gaming plays Delta Green Impossible Landscapes. Uh, we are here with uh, my good friends Brad, Dace, and Jean, and then I am Joe, your handler. Uh, before we get started, uh, before we kind of get into what we're going to be doing like today, I I realized that one of the things that <laughs> kind of not really talked about really is that we haven't really talked about what Delta Green is <laughs> or uh, what we're doing here and uh, I feel like especially if anyone else ever watches this they're going to be a little bit confused about uh, what is actually happening so I guess we'll start with uh, probably, I want to start with uh, start with Dace what what do you think Delta Green is? Like, how would you describe Delta Green to the completely uninitiated? Well, Delta Green is like Call of Cthulhu, but with either more or less steps. I'm not sure which. What is Call of Cthulhu, you ask? It's a tabletop role-playing game. What is a tabletop role-playing game, you ask? Well, in 1976, <laughs> there's a man called Gary Gygax. All right, all right, all right. I think we're getting too far into it. <laughs> <laughs> what is a Gary Gygax? What is a Gary what Gygax? Is... <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What what kind of name is Gygax? Like, what country of what origin does country? it come from? I don't know. Maybe Odin. Oh, but he uh, comes yeah. from the ether himself, <laughs> the outer world. Uh, called Delta Green is. I mean, it's a horror-based game for sure. It, it deals with like Cthulhu mythos, but not exclusively Cthulhu mythos. That's one difference between it and Call of Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's about suspense, but it's also about the process a lot more than Call of Cthulhu. I think, like, it's the the organization of Delta Green is almost as much of a character as PCs and like the the mythos behind it and and the history of it. Uh, is that fair to say? Yeah. So, so how about this? How about uh, Jean? Like, what do you, what do you think about, or what do you know about the actual organization of Delta Green itself? Like, what's your conceptualization of it? Oh, uh, it's uh, shadowy at best. It's a shadowy organization that isn't really an organization, but more a one that you do not talk about. Uh, so it lies in between. Okay. Um, it's not best. That's 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 all you should know, and that's, that's all, all your questions you should ask, frankly, because right now. <laughs> well, okay. Brad, we're talking about this. Really, all we need to know. I don't think we have to ask Brad. I think we got <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, don't ask about it. Don't talk about it. Uh, Brad, like, what is, like, what do you think Delta Green does? Like the organization of Delta Green. What do you think it's all about? I mean, I think you explained it pretty good, like, for someone not, um, who doesn't know anything about, like, tabletop games or even Cthulhu, it's basically, like, the Men in Black, a version of the Men in Black, only yeah. instead of aliens, it's everything supernatural. That's how I yeah. see it. It's a good yeah. way to put it. And a lot yeah, of it's funny like... Or, um, comical. <laughs> Definitely funny, just not, like, intentionally, so... Yeah, there's... Yeah, the comedy is not not as uh light-hearted as men in black is sometimes uh yeah. but yeah like i think that's a it's an apt comparison that you know that the delta green game is about uh it's about that you are working with an organization delta green that uh basically has taken upon itself the defense of humanity uh, sometimes depending on different parts in history maybe they're kind of looking out for the united states you know or there's times where they're tilted more towards that but basically the idea is like there are things out there in the universe uh you know you call them aliens call them demons or spirits uh call it bigfoot whatever it is anything that you've ever heard a conspiracy theory or a weird story about delta green would have been there and basically trying to cover up the awful truth uh that you know that we are that something is going to get us eventually like i think that's part of like the cthulhu mythos kind of ideas like that there are um that there are 
entities that exist outside of the world or outside of our realm, outside of our dimension, that eventually will destroy or eat or just wake up and everything will be destroyed. Um, and that's, I think, and it all comes from, um, or the vast majority of it comes from uh, uh, Lovecraft, who wrote a bunch of the Cthulhuan stories. That's what it's all based on, uh, old H.P. Lovecraft. So yeah, but it's like, um, I think one of the, probably one of the most popular pieces of media that kind of touches on the feel of it, I think is, I think we mentioned it last time, is True Detective Season 1. Yeah. Um, like, oh, yeah. That'd be a good they kind of touch on that idea of there being the otherworldly, or the unnatural kind of putting its tendrils into the real world. Um, but yeah. Man, yeah. Russ Cole would be a fun character to play. Like, just yeah. a Russ Cole ripoff. Right. <laughs> I'm sitting here writing down a, a list of backup characters in case Cus- Benji Cus- dies. Yeah, I would like to change well, my name to Woody Harrelson. Okay. <laughs> if possible. <laughs> yeah. First, what I've got was uh, Smill With. And he would... <laughs> uh, he would like have a lot of points in hand to hand combat. <laughs> uh, and he would have anger issues about his wife. Yeah. And that's smell with. That's all smell with. And there's it's... Jami Lee Tones. <laughs> <laughs> and what is uh what's Jami's specialty? Uh being a grizzled old bastard. <laughs> okay, Roger. Uh, uh, right, did I, tell I like you, him already. Did I tell you about you guys about Cabinet of Curiosities? I yes, I think you you've it. mentioned check, it. Check it out. Um, uh, Guillermo del Toro. Um, oh, he produces it, and each episode is directed by a different director. So there's varying quality. Like I think some are much better than others. There's I think there's eight episodes, but some of them are like crazy good and really really touch on some of the things that make Delta Green great you know you know who um, writes it is it one writer or is it like an anthology type thing it's a, every episode is completely different completely separate story uh, so yeah I don't know um, who the individual writers are each one um, yeah it's I still uh, want to see that uh, last thing Nick Cage has been in that was straight up like a Lovecraft story, Color Out of Space. Hmm. Have y'all seen Color that one yet? Of... I have not. Um... It's a movie with uh, Nicolas Cage in it. Not Nicolas Cage. Yes, Nicolas Cage. Yes, Nicolas Cage. I've read okay. the I've read the story, the source material from Lovecraft, right. and, and it's one of the probably one of the better Lovecraft stories I've read. Yeah. Because I... it's not like a it's not a mon. Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah. Oh, it's, it's not hard. a monster. Wow. It's hard to even say what it is. Yeah, well, I guess it's not a monster. Well, uh, yeah, I was yeah, actually going to say it's not a monster cheese. Okay. Uh, it's not a, <laughs> not a cheese. <laughs> There's no monster. Why am I even going to watch it now? Shit. Why would I watch it? <laughs> All right. So, um, where we left off last time. Last episode, we spent the first third uh, kind of getting characters together. Uh, and we were introduced to our three characters. Uh, we were introduced to Brad's character, Hank Ellis, U.S. Marshal. Uh, to John's character, uh, Benedict Farthington. And to Dace's character, Benji Potts. Nice uh, to meet you. <laughs> Benji Potts, <laughs> a blues historian. And uh, Bennington Farthington is, uh, I believe, an editor or editor in chief of the Daily Mail. Yes. What kind of what kind of publication is the Daily Mail? It's a real it's a real publication. I know that. Like, yeah, yeah. What what kind of stuff do they publish? It's uh, it's not the it's not the highbrow sort of publication that you used to. It's the more uh, little 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 tier. You, you talk about the the crazy things that are happening with your neighbor's dogs, uh, the weird ducks that you see on the pond. That's where this. this is it like conspiracy tabloids kind of stuff? Close. Okay. 
All but right. he looks down on every other. But he looks down. On <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> like this guy peaked too soon. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? What was it he said last session to that writer? <laughs> that was so cold. Uh, uh, He's like, "Do oh, you oh. consider yourself an artist?" <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no, no. It was when uh, he was leaving the room. The uh, the guy was like, uh, "I've got some writing to do," and he's like, "Yes, you do. You do." <laughs> <laughs> it's ice cold. The funny thing is, is because Jean is such a nice guy, like, <laughs> and it's just, and the, I think you even mentioned it last time. You're like, you're like, you're like, oh, this is this is hard. <laughs> it's really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so last time three characters, Hank, Bennington, and Benji, uh, receive their summons. It is 1955 in New York City. Wait, 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 quick, what? Quick what? recap on Hank. We missed Hank. What about Hank? Hank, U.S. Marshal. Yeah. yeah. That's, all Marshall. Okay. that's all there is. That's all he is. That's all he is. He is. He's just uh, all you need. That's that's all you need now. <laughs> um. But yeah, so it's 19, it's 1955. You guys are in New York. You were summoned by your handler, Agent Marcus. Um, oh, and it's also worth noting that your code names are uh, Agent Molasses, or Hank, uh, <laughs> Agent Matador, <laughs> or Bennington, Previously and of course, Agent Mitya. <laughs> Agent Mitya for old Benji Potts. As, As in, please to meet, please to meet you. <laughs> Um, you guys were summoned by your handler. You were told that um, that a case had caught the attention of a cell. You guys remember it's an M cell, which is why your code names all start with M. That the command element of Delta Green um, had caught wind of something suspicious and an occult symbol uh, that was detected uh, that was photographed or noticed in some files from a missing persons case in New York. Um, Abigail Wright, and if you guys aren't already on uh, Roll20, uh, then you can go ahead and head there. Um, Abigail Wright, a young artist uh, living in New York in Kipps Bay, has gone missing um, and it basically the case kind of went cold. Um, it was uh, an NYPD case, uh, but then uh, her credit card was discovered in Maryland, which prompted it to become a concern for a uh, kidnapping case, which was bought to the FBI's jurisdiction. You guys are all there under the auspices of being FBI agents. Uh, you've been given the arduous task. Uh, once you all actually arrived at her apartment, you discovered that the apartment was filled with junk, uh, a weird kind of hoarder's paradise mixed with some bizarre, like almost shrine. Um, and you begin to investigate because you guys have been given the the cover task, your, your cover for being there for the FBI is that you need to catalog everything in this place which is going to take several days um, you guys began to look into what's going on here um, don't think I have forgotten that Benji Potts got a critical success on an occult role uh, to kind of get an idea of what was going on here I have not forgotten that um, you guys began to look through some of the things uh, Benji went in and started searching uh wasn't able to get any sorry that's the dog uh wasn't able to find anything successful but he had this kind of strange thing going on he was there in the room and he kept hearing static and every time he would go over and move a pile of garbage or papers or you know or soda cans like he would go over and move them and the static would be somewhere else he spent a little time uh kind of wasting some time doing that but it was a little odd um, you guys went and spoke to uh, one of the neighbors, uh, Roger uh, Karen Karun. Um, I forgot how I decided his name uh, was actually pronounced. Um, but that was the author who you guys went and talked to. Bennington and Hank interviewed him. Um, it seems to be uh, no new information there. It seems to be a bit of a failed writer. 
Um, you guys then went to one of the other neighbors, um, who I believe, which one was it that you had gone to and really offended Thomas. him? Um, yes, you guys went to Thomas Manuel, and uh, Benji was uh, really effectively got that door slammed in you guys' face. Uh, and that is where we left off. So, I will say this as we start off. It is getting late in the evening. It is quite late. Um, it's probably about time for you guys to head home. In past operations that we've played, you guys have really been on the mission, on the operation, and that's all you're doing because you had some official cover. This is not that. You guys live here in New York. Uh, you have responsibilities. You have jobs. You have people who who want to see you. You have responsibilities to you know different folks. Uh, Hank works at the U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, uh, Bennington uh, is here, uh, corresponding or working with probably one of the local like you know say like maybe like you've got an office at the Times. Uh, you know you're doing some work with them for the time being, and you know and Benji. Uh, Benji's working on a dissertation and is working at Juilliard. So you guys have responsibilities, you know, professional ones on top of personal ones. So, uh, that being said, it is getting late in the evening. You guys are in Abigail Wright's apartment in the McAllister building. Um, what would you like to do? How late, what time oh, exactly is it? We'll say it's like six-ish o'clock like it's starting to get sun's starting to go down it's it's typically going home kind of time and where are we talking right now right guy right now you got still in the McAllister building which is where abigail Wright's apartment is something we else probably... that's kind of also one one you kind of touched on joe but like i guess benji's the only one that has any uh even if it was like a small like uh hint of some kind of supernatural element being there because he had like some like he rolled that critical role on the just like looking at the apartment but then he also saw a clown child <laughs> with a dragon flag oh yes uh, when you guys were in the park getting your briefing Benji yeah. saw something odd which was he saw this weird clown that was doing this weird dance um, with this paper yeah. dragon <laughs> and uh, like a uh, uh, record player in the park and then when Benji looked back it was gone it was just something it's kind of an odd odd happening well Hank's gonna say uh, Benji and Benedict I don't know what exactly brought you to this organization or what you're exactly doing outside of uh, our investigation but I'm gonna say it right now I don't like Thomas Nobody makes a possum's pecker out of Hank Ellis. And I'm going to put on a mask and come back here later tonight and ransack his apartment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Golly. That and, and by the a way, bit much. And by the way, do you guys know each other's uh, real names or are you just code names? I don't think we've said it to each other yet, really. No. Just code names. A Benji yeah. may have. Benji. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, so... So Hank is saying that he's going to come back and rob this guy's place? Well, for all, yes, I am. Because <laughs> for, for all I know, uh, I don't know if any of y'all have seen any nonsense about uh, a markings or some sick, whatever this uh, the organization found. I don't see it. For all I know, uh, the right girl's in that man's apartment, and he was acting suspicious, and that's where I stand. You do, you do also know the NYPD has interrogated these people. You guys talked earlier in the day with Detective, um, uh, let's see, Guaradanda, is that it? Um, and he had told you that they were going to bring over the files and stuff for you guys of the interviews and things they have done. Um, so, you do know that. You do know that people have been inside his apartment, most likely. Um, and, and I will say this. Like, you guys have offended him, but that doesn't mean you can't come back at a different time, perhaps? With well, disguises. With Hank's mask. a little hot. Hank's a little hot-headed, okay? okay. So, <laughs> maybe I will take a look at the file. 
but I still don't like that man. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, like you got there are other, you know, there might be other things to investigate. Wow. Yeah, how many uh, our, neighbors our do neighbors. we have left? Okay. So, if you guys, um, if you guys will reference the map on roll twenty there, and actually yeah. I can, uh, I can move us over to that screen as well. Um, the it's a three floor building. Um, that is, there's a ground floor, the first floor, which is the one above the ground floor, and then the second floor. Um, there is also a basement, uh, but you have to go around the outside uh, to get to the basement access. You actually have to go out into the alleyway and down a set of stairs to the basement. Um, okay. So there are, in this building, there are um, 11 apartments. Um, and if you guys, um, and like you would have noticed this when you came in, when you came in, there's the, you guys had keys to get in the building. And there are the the buzzers, you know, where you can buzz in to get someone, you buzz up someone's apartment so they can let you in. You would have noticed there that there are no name tags on most of these. And the packet that you have from Agent Marcus, from the info that the FBI has, it seems to, it seems that the vast majority of this place is empty. In fact, it seems like uh, between Abigail and her neighbors that there's only five people living here in out of 11 apartments and abigail's missing that in and of itself is super weird right like an apartment with that many vacancies in new york right and this this uh, this is metagaming a little bit but look at that man's bed on the floor plan it's in a corner and facing out what kind of psycho does that <laughs> this dude's got problems <laughs> this dude's a black job well the building itself is like it is a turn of the century like old school building it's got like you know like big concrete gargoyles on the outside and inside it looks like oddly it looks like it used to be very like very snazzy very ritzy there's like uh, the carpet is like a, it's like a, a like plush red, except for the fact that it's been beaten down by years of use. Like the, it's kind of the the wallpaper is gaudy. Um, you can imagine it was probably might have been quite luxurious at some point, but it's peeling like in a... the corners and whatnot. And the banisters hmm. are are very nice. It looks like an old building that was converted into apartment some point in time and has not been you know, preserved super well. It's been lived in. I'm picturing that one swanky casino in Fallout New Vegas that like was swanky but has fallen into disrepair. You know what? That's not that's not a bad comparison. Maybe a little less rundown and a lot less uh ghouls. L- um, less radiation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh but yeah. Uh I well, think we so, probably got time for go ahead. No uh, uh Benedict was going to say, well, it says, um, that seems like that's past my bedtime. Uh, I'm going to go and retire for the evening because honestly, I don't get paid well enough to do this job. Your and bedtime is at six o'clock? Golly, I thought I went to bed early. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he may head out, but probably go past the mailboxes, and uh, he's got something in mind for the mailboxes. Okay, you you do have a mailbox key, um, or for Abigail, it's with her, uh, with the rest of her, with her the apartment key. There's like a smaller mailbox key on there. Well, good, Benji. Benji, it looks like Benedict's left us now. I could use some backup on this operation. I am going to go into this man's room, and <laughs> there's a reason we are assigned to this. There's some, the police couldn't get, couldn't figure it out. That's why we're here. We well, might need well, to hold. show a little muscle. Which which man are you talking about? The Lord have mercy. The psychopath with the bed catty cornered in his room. Even though we as characters couldn't see that on the <laughs> on the first floor. That's an awfully detailed blueprint. How do you imagine they can see into people's rooms like that? <laughs> I frankly don't want to. Uh, think about it too much, Benji, but uh, where do you stand on this night raid? 
Well, uh, it's only six. I figure we got time for one more interview, and then I'd like to check out uh, uh, if there's a basement under Abigail's apartment. Uh, is the sounds- basement directly under Abigail's apartment? I mean, it's under the building. Because I, I wanted to check out Lewis, aka the the bed psycho's room, because it's directly above Abigail's apartment, right? Oh, he has a cat. The bed psycho's bed tallest. Yeah, they they both have beds that are oddly placed. Oh, so yeah. like Hank, Hank wants to continue to harass the person that you slighted by saying "hablas español." <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. I will. I will. Put, I will say this, Hank. You know that this one. You know that you're. Your mission is not necessarily your Delta Green mission is not to find Abigail. Your Delta Green mission is to figure out what is unnatural here, if there is anything, and to neutralize it, whatever that means. Second, as a U.S. Marshal, you know that this is incredibly illegal what you're talking about doing, and could end in. Uh, some pretty heavy consequences and as a handler I will leave it there Hank is the law well, Dan- well, let's see what this uh, goes I- I'm going to express everything the hand you just said to Benji but damn it I can't help but th- I'm still an uh, officer of the law and I need to protect this girl's life if it's even still there fair enough Hank- I ain't gonna stop you, but I, if you do anything illegal, I just don't want to know about it. <laughs> well, Benji, I'm I'm very well not gonna do this on my own and uh, stop the whole game so I can do something crazy like this. But uh, <laughs> maybe we'll think of it. All right, I'll just just think about it, Benji. Uh, I will. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's it. So we want to try one more interview. Yeah, I want to. I want to check out uh, the apartment above Abigail's. See if this guy's heard anything. Um, Lewis, Louis. Yeah. So you want to you want to talk to Lewis Post. Posts. Get to my my info on Lewis. Okay. So, you guys. uh, So. So let, actually, let's go to uh, God. What's your ridiculous name again? Benedict. Uh, <laughs> let's go to Benedict uh, again. Real quick. So Benedict, you're on, you're on your way out. You're basically told the guys like I'm I'm out. I'm done for the day. I don't get paid yeah. for this. You're really not getting paid anything for this. Uh, when you think about it. Uh, so you're on your way out. And what are you going to go do? Uh, he's going to go ransack the mailboxes. Okay. And you... also open Abigail's one to check if there's anything legitimate there. Okay, yeah, you um, you open Abigail's mailbox, and as you do, it you know as you turn the key, the door, the little door, like pushes open with all of the mail in it. Uh, there is a oh, significant shit. amount of mail stuffed into this box. You know, probably from the other side that. You know, postal workers have just been pushing mail in uh, as it's stacked oh, up. Damn it. You, yeah, um, you see, uh, there is a there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff in here. The uh, like you can take some time to go through it, um, but as one of the big things that you notice immediately as you're leaping through it um, are big red letters like "past due," "final notice," things like that. Um, looks like a lot of its bills uh, that have gone unpaid and in 1995 all of those would have been uh, delivered by mail you know there wouldn't be uh, so yeah that's the, that's the first thing that's what you notice uh, right now just looking at it uh, without really kind of getting into it cool kind of much of himself that's fine grabs all the mail goes back to the rooms fellas fellas and I don't know if they're up the stairs yet but he doesn't give a fuck. So he goes and dumps them along with the rest of the shit in Abigail Wright's apartment uh-huh. um, and gets back to the other mailboxes and wants to search <laughs> or find if there's anything. Because he, he also was he was quite offended by uh, 
by Thomas Manuel's um, curtness. So he wants to go and maybe try dig around, maybe even break open Thomas Manuel's mailbox. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, if you if you try to get into Thomas Manuel's mailbox, you will have to break him. Uh, you do not have a key. So does 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 Benedict have? I think I was calling you calling you Benedict Bennington, by the way. I think that's, that's wrong. His, uh, uh, that's his alias, Bennington. Yes. Okay. Um, does, does Benedict have a um, have a skill that would actually assist him in that? Uh got unarmed combat but that's that's not going to get him much against the <laughs> mailbox just fucking on wailing on the mailbox <laughs> <laughs> oh, does he really have anything except for I guess his big build so he could just try and rip it out he's always a he's a big burly guy well, I'm going to say that without a tool you're not going to be able to do that no. I, I mean, fully mean, support you doing this Benedict though yeah all right, he doesn't have anything on him. He's just come from work, so he doesn't have any tools. Can he take a look around to see if there's anything lying around that he could use? Yes. You can do such a check to see if there are some random crowbars lying about. What do you think? Uh, or maybe you could use his intelligence <laughs> to find a clever way to get in. Hmm... What kind, of, what kind of are these like standard apartment mailboxes that are like set up in a, a grid kind of pattern? Yeah, like in the, you get you're walking the building and they're there to the side. Yeah. Now, okay, in our apartment building, there's a latch on the side that opens up a whole row. It's not like you can you can have an individual key, but there's a big latch on the side that opens up the whole section for the mail um, guys to just like throw them in there. Is there anything like yeah, that, there's, Joe? There's probably something like that. Like all, like so there's, you a, could, you, there's a space you on the back. Break this you might be able to get like access to all of them. You know? Yeah. All right. Can I go for that? But I need a tool then. Like, we, I we, say, I'd say you saying, need a tool. You don't have anything. Need a right tool. Now. Okay. Does Hank have anything on him? Would Hank, Hank would have something on him, right? Maybe yeah, not on him, but I'm, I would just assume he probably can get access to this, right, Joe? I, I mean, would say sure. that it'd be fairly easy for Hank to get access to pry bar, crowbar, you know, like a multi-tool kind of deal. Well, Hank okay. notices what um, Benedict's trying to do. He's like, I fully support this idea, Benedict, and on our way out, I will find some uh, tools for you to uh, steal these this uh, person's mail. I love how uh, you guys uh, have taken uh, this guy's this guy so like personally the fact that well, then, Benji I, <laughs> did, like basically did this I think we should do this yeah, nice now okay Hank's not stupid I think <laughs> Hank would think he needs backup so I'm not gonna raid this guy's apartment I do want to Hank does want to but not without backup I think at the very least we should snoop around there's no reason for him not to let us in his apartment especially yeah. Benji's like I don't condone none of this, but back home, we used a tool to kill cows, and it was like a little bolt that goes into their head and <laughs> blows their brains out. If we could find one of those, we could probably get these mailboxes unlocked. Yeah. What's most you would wager on a coin toss? Ain't just... Man, bears. <laughs> Benedict just looks and shakes his head. <laughs> Never mind. Bolton. <laughs> Never mind. You're scaring me, Benji. All right. So, so is Benedict is is Benedict uh, leaving ben for the time being? No, Benedict. I guess will realize the futility of what he's doing, but he will wait for Hank at the entrance of there. You, you, you fellas, do whatever you need to do upstairs. I'm going to wait here. I figure we'll do this like one. Benji can lead the investigation if he would. If he wants to, and I figure we'll just do this one more that went great on the way out time. to our like, uh, you know, respected <sighs> home lives. I think yeah. I would want Hank to stop by uh, the office and um, hands Benedict some tools on the side or something to that okay. extent, you know. So, but for now, for now, you guys are going to go upstairs and talk to uh, Lewis Post. Yeah. 
Okay, and Lewis, he has the apartment directly above Abigail, as um, uh, Benji had noticed. Uh, he is in 4A, and the letters are, depend on the the way that the building is numbered and the apartments are numbered, apartments on one side of the building are A, and apartments on the other side of the building are B, and then are also numbered 1 through 11. You guys get to uh, Lewis uh, Post Room, and uh, you give it a knock. Who's and who's going to be uh, engaging with Lewis, or who's going to start out? Uh, I guess I will. Yeah. All right. Um, you you knock on the door, and as you do, you see. Uh, actually, let me grab Lewis on the old roll twenty. Let's grab. Let's grab a picture of Lewis here. Where are we? There he is. There he is. He did it. He's the killer. He's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's on our shit list. Look now how as big well. his head is compared to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second, guys. Christ. Uh, there Obviously, so the that's, killer. that's Lewis. You should be able to. Uh, Control that, and I have to finagle something real quick. On hasty white skin, soulless eyes, nondescript demeanor, classic serial killer. Classic serial killer, or just a programmer. <laughs> Basically, What's the a serial difference? killer. <laughs> God, it's like every time I look away from looking at him, I forget what he looks like. <laughs> How's that possible? It's that is... so bland. <laughs> He's like, if I could describe him, and in, in, in the best analogy I could come up with is like unseasoned mashed potatoes, no salt, no pepper. <laughs> wow. I bet he has an acoustic guitar in his room that he only knows two songs on. Oh, you know it, and they're both Hoobastank. <laughs> <laughs> he probably right. drinks milk with his dinner every night. <laughs> Make sure to uh, make sure to label his name to someone. Um, he probably um, waters down his milk. milk. He probably makes his own skin milk. <laughs> that has to be one of, the, one of so the saddest well. things I've ever heard. That he waters down his own milk. <laughs> it's too spicy otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys knock on There's the door. There's too much flavor. <laughs> You guys knock on the door and you see uh you see this guy. Um he is um he's I how how old is Lewis? And the he's a, he's a young white guy. Uh he comes to the door. He is wearing like a um he's wearing like a white t shirt and a pair of uh khakis. He's wearing khakis oh, at home. Oh no. Mm. Wearing khakis mm. at home. Mm. Yeah, yes. Uh, and uh, you see him, and he he opens the door with the chain still attached. And he's like, uh, uh, "Can I, can I, can I help you?" Hi, uh, I'm Agent Meacher from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. That's Meacher, as in police. To and he sticks out his hand. I like your chinos, brother. Oh, oh, th- thank you. Um. Uh, hold on. He closes the door, undoes the chain, opens up. He goes. He comes out uh, and closes the door behind him. He's like, "God, did you? Uh, are you guys? Wow, are you are you guys here for? Uh, you guys must be here by the Abigail." That's right. Uh, when was the last time you saw Abigail? Oh, uh, I mean, you know, uh, right before, you know, you know, like you know, just kind of here and there. Uh, sometimes I think the last time I probably saw her was, you know, I think a few days before the police came around. I, uh, you know, I have an apartment that faces the street. I think I saw her, you know, come here going. Uh, we don't really, uh, talk much. But, yeah. I I already told the NYPD that, though. You'd say your relationship with her was pretty casual? I, I mean, I didn't really know her. I mean, really, like, not really. I just, I just lived above there. You ever hear any strange sounds coming from her apartment? How is she as a neighbor? Oh, fine, fine. Uh, just regular, you know. Uh, 
Yeah. That's no really strange nice. smells wafting up through the vents. No. No, that's no uh nothing like that. Is it Shh. Do you think Do you think she's in the vents? Do you think she's Oh my god, that's so bad. That's so terrible. Oh. Look, oh, really? There's a lot of evil people in the world and some people are just unaccountable for. Yeah, yeah, that's that's terrible. <sighs> he said, do you think she's in the vents? <laughs> well, you, well you, you said that was there anything you bad smell about the room. <laughs> um Golly. And tell me a little bit about yourself, Lewis. What do you do for a living? I'm I'm a I'm an uh, I'm an illustrator. Well, you draw mostly nudes. No, no, I uh, uh comic books. I do a lot of I do I do some covers. I, I oh, that's great! I love a strip every now and then. You got any? Uh, which ones are you working on in particular? He gives you the names of some comic books that are like not the most well known but they're like middle of the road and he tells you he's like that he's done some cover art but like the Manga. bottom of the barrel superheroes that they're making movies about these days because they've exhausted all the other ones <laughs> yeah not not even the big time stuff but he's he's done some stuff well that's just great I love your art <laughs> hmm yeah. You notice oh. anything strange uh, about Abigail and the days leading to her disappearance? Anything uh, no. weird about her schedule, her comings and goings? No, like I said, I didn't really pay attention. It's not really, it's, it's not really my business. Yeah, well, it's kind of hard not to pay attention to a girl like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's a looker. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's, I. I've got, actually got something I'm working on. Uh, I, it's like, you know, so I, I kind of need to get back in here if you guys don't mind. I'm kind of busy. Well, be watching. Now you have a good night. You hear? Yes. You too. And he slides back in his apartment door. Uh, that was a bust. <laughs> um,. I think the most awkward part was Hank's silence throughout the whole thing. <laughs> Just watching. Just standing there. Well, uh, yeah. I'm, like still, I'm still stewing over Thomas, so I, I didn't want to get involved, but uh, I do find it interesting. Is this an artsy part of town? Everyone in here, including Abigail, are related to the arts. We got a comic book illustrator, a World War II author, and a uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Abigail's abstract art. I don't know about Thomas yet, but they're all involved in the arts. Yep, that's what it seems like. Well, you guys want to check out the basement? We might as well talk. To, uh, what do y'all think about knocking on Mitchell's door real quick? Uh, that's the last man, our last person. It's Michelle. Michelle, Bye. sorry, that's the last person here. Yep. You want to take the lead on this one? Unless, uh, unless you want to, Benedict. Uh, Benedict is still downstairs, tapping his. Unless you want to, Benedict, as he yells downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, oh never mind. The picture I'm dropping here is uh, Thomas Manuel. I uh, Thomas. All right. Gonna... Uh, I guess I'll do a quick one with family. Michelle knock on her door okay. you guys uh you guys head downstairs Benedict will come upstairs after the kerfuffle okay upstairs what are you, you get, what are you talking you, about you head back down and uh to michelle's room or to michelle's apartment i'm sorry no you go upstairs uh he's right across from lewis i think is is she oh okay yeah maybe yeah. so sorry uh yeah you turn right around and you give Michelle Van Fitz his door a knock and there is no response um, knock louder say uh, uh, Michelle is Michelle there uh, again nothing um, you kind of look 
there's like a, a window down at the end of the building and you can see it looks like the uh you know that the the sun is just below the horizon now you know it's getting a little later in the evening and uh maybe she's not back from work or but there's no indication of anything really you you give it a knock nothing benedict tries the, the door yeah it it's locked hmm uh, you made me come up here for nothing, you two. Uh, okay, <laughs> Hank's not gonna pursue the... What do y'all think? Uh, Hank's going to uh, write a note, leave it on the door, say, uh, with our number. Oh, we don't have cell phone numbers. Uh, we'll number. say, call his office, whatever, you know. Okay. And then, if I can, find a piece of tape and put tape across the door. So I'll know if it was opened or not if I come back. Okay, uh, we'll say that down with the supplies that you have with the FBI, we'll say there's some tape in there for like labeling things. So yeah, you could put a piece of tape over the door or something like like the door um, crease. Yeah, you could probably do something like that. Let's buy shit. So yeah. Well, I guess we need to take a different approach, but I do want to check out the basement before we get out of here. I do believe it's it's not such a safe neighborhood. Uh, but sure, why not hang out in the basement in New York City? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so you guys you guys head outside. Um. Real quick. Um. Everyone, make me an alertness check. Uh oh. Hey. And, when, and when you make your rolls, uh, give me. Make sure to enunciate your rolls for me. So you say, you know, I got a, I got a whatever over whatever or whatever. Benji got okay. an eight under twenty success. Yeah. Twelve under twenty for Benedict. Everybody's really alert late at night. Yeah. Holy shit! We all have twenties and we all passed. Wasted roll. We're gonna well, notice. I got, a, I got a third. just. I just made it 47. Yeah. So, uh, as you guys are on your way out, you are getting, you're coming down the stairs, the, the ground floor to the first floor stairs. You're coming down and all of you kind of at the same time, like you kind of, kind of take a sniff and like, you're like, and you all like, you know, you all, you know, kind of, you all crinkle your noses for a second. It's like, um, did any of your characters traditionally have pets, do you think? Like dogs or cats? Benedict has a bird. Benedict has a bird. Benji's sure probably got a cat. Any yeah. any of you who have spent any time, you know, it's like that's like that's like dog dog piss. Like, hmm. like, Wait, where are we we're just on the first floor or we're out by the trying to get You're into like the on base. the stairs coming down to the ground floor, like on your way out. And just you know, like like, yeah, that sounds like someone has a dog. Do any of y'all smell dog piss? Yeah, I do smell dog piss. <laughs> uh, uh, what what is odd is this smells really strong. Like you would go so far as to say it's like a dog is just pissed in here. Like you can't really see no, where it okay. is. Like the carpet's all kind of stained already, and you're just like. You didn't smell it on the way up, though. So this is inside the apartment building? We're going down the stairwell from the yeah. second floor. I don't know why it's labeled first floor, but... It's the floor the way, the it's called, Let's just call it, because it makes more sense to us, let's call the ground floor the first floor. Okay. The floor some kind of the second floor and third floor. It's uh, So you guys are on the stairwell between the first and second floor. Mm -hmm. Can we... Uh, yeah. All right, fellas, I, I, this may be a little strange, but uh, just roll with me here. Yeah? And Benedict just starts barking. <laughs> 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 All right. It echoes into the and apartment then he building. No, no response? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, He's hoping for the dog to bark, if there was a dog. <laughs> Benji reaches into his pocket and pulls out a pork chop smothered in white gravy and wags it around <laughs> seductively. Hair, puppy, puppy, puppy. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, All right, surprisingly um, enough, that seems to have no effect. Can I roll a no spot dog? dog? 
can you roll a spot dog check? Uh, yeah, you, you you don't you fail the I spot mean, dog check. Okay. Um. How do uh, I want to roll something to look? Let's see. I mean, I will continue down to the first floor and like see if I'm gonna it's... search. Roll search. Okay. Roll search check. Thirty-five success. Thirty-five under forty. And that's a search check for Benji for 76. And she got a failure for Benji. Um, so you will say you search and you find you find a wet spot. You find a wet spot of dog piss. Uh, over here, fellas, I found the dog piss. Uh, <laughs> is it, uh, <laughs> we're found it the where piss, is it located? Now we just gotta find the dog. It's like on the third step up. Um, it's like it looks like, and it's like on the banister, like you would imagine a dog would go and like hike its leg and like piss on like the uh, railing well we didn't see a dog in any other any in Abigail's apartment or Rogers did we no sign gotta be that shithead dog (laughs) (laughs) um okay I don't know what else we could do with this information yeah I don't Uh But is we'll note that I'm sure it is of some relevance (laughs) as we continue. You guys, you guys head outside. Um, The same key that opens the door to get in the building is um, opens the basement. Uh, You go into the basement, and it seems pretty unremarkable. There's um, a lot of the stuff you'd kind of expect. There's you know like a, a box of linoleum tiles, like maybe for you know replacing you know, ruined pieces of flooring. Um, There's, you know, like some of the really old, like I said, this building is like really old fashioned, like turn of the century kind of stuff. There's like, you know, several of the, like, they're not candelabras, but like the, you know, like the fancy gaudy, like uh, white, white bulb lamps that are uh, on the wall. There's like a few of those. Some of them are broken, you know, and things like that. Um, There's also... There are like a few kind of small rooms. They're basically like closets. Looks like a lot of this is storage. Um, you see some boxes that have uh, looks like the names of tenants on them. Maybe they use this area for storage. And one of the rooms, um, you see that there is a looks to be have been converted into an, uh, a studio, like an art studio. And you see that um, it's smell like as you like open the door it smells of oil and paint thinner um, and there's like a, a pile of a can- or not a pile but like a stack of canvases against one of the walls and uh, yeah and you that's the most noteworthy thing that you find down here and as you first give it a once over does it look kind similar of- to the art that was in Abigail's apartment the work you want to look through the canvases Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, you uh, you look through them, and as you pull them, like the first to the side, uh, you see that there's there's several several paintings, and they're they're all quite good. You'd say like that's your first impression that they're like whoever did this is very um, very skilled, but there are a few ones that are kind of. Some of them look to be, you know, maybe in process. The first one you pull out is, um, it looks to be a, it's very lifelike. It's like a, not quite photorealistic, but um, it looks like the painting of a scene. And it is of the scene of the viewer, or the observer is looking up a set of stairs. And at the top of the stairs is a figure with a white mask like a white, very blank, featureless mask. Um, and the whole house, the whole building around it appears to be engulfed in flames. And it's just staring down the stairs. Um, another one, you look and you see there is a... It looks like to be a um, a, a boy. Or, or not a boy, but like a young man. Um, and he's in a like a hospital gown and he's standing looking at the observer 
um, standing there in front of a, a tall mirror. But the reflection in the mirror is looks similar to him, but is twisted and gnarled and and deformed, with like a misshapen head, and you know, like muscles that are like too big in some place and too small in the other. The last thing that you see, and are you all looking at this? Are you all going through this together? By the way, uh, Benji was planning on going through the boxes to see if he could find anything with Abigail's name on it. Okay. So I think Benedict as, would be wanting to leave, so I don't think he'd be looking stuff. Okay, maybe Benedict's just kind of hovering at the door. So, and then as you're going through this, Hank, the last picture you see is you see in, in beautiful, pristine detail what looks to be a child-sized person wearing a clown's outfit. Hmm beautiful blue colors and it is mid dance and like twirling this trailing white shape all around it um thanks like uh benedict benji come over here and take a look at this you're more of the artsy fartsy people um not really my style but i can tell it was done uh with great precision um, and he rallies them over there to look oh. at the three photos. Oh, I don't like this at all. This is awful. This yeah, is... Uh, Benji, yeah. you see this and you immediately recognize this. This is not yeah. like, and even as you look at it, you're looking at the at the whole picture, not just the subject. Roll me a sanity check for Benji. I was like, I was like, are we about to be in the picture? <laughs> that would be tricky. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Nightmare. Sanity. Here we go. Sanity for Benji. That's uh, an eighty-nine over Uh-oh. fifty-one failure. Failure. Blood uh, runs take, cold. Take one point of sanity damage and put a tick in helplessness if you are not yet. Uh, uh, immune to helplessness. You are looking at this, uh, and it is a picture. Of the the dancing clown is at his feet is a, a record player, and a, behind him is a fountain and a beautiful, crisp blue. He would go as far as to say, August day in New York, and you look, and one of the figures in the crowd surrounding them you think back oh, no. and it's like someone maybe there was like a, another street performer there you know who you kind of vaguely remembered who kind of stood out there was like a mime in the background you know like like street performers doing something or someone who was doing like street drumming like a what is it like where they have the all the buckets and they're yeah. drumming on them uh you see you remember seeing that person also by the fountain and you see them in the background as benji realizes this is uncannily similar to you guys when you were meeting in Washington Square Park. Yeah, Benji's blood runs cold and he just like starts to sweat and shake. You know, he like tries to conceal it. Um, I don't think he's going to say anything about the vision he saw in the park because um, well, he barely knows these guys and he doesn't want him to think he's insane. Right. So, well, would we notice him like visibly? Yeah, Hank, this fella looks a little sweaty. <laughs> well, <laughs> shit, I didn't think they were that bad. Well, What's and that you, Benji? well, and as you're looking at these, uh, ben, uh, Benedict, do you see a you see another piece and it's wrapped? It's a another canvas that's right beside those. It seems to be separate from these. It's wrapped, um, like in a cloth, like to store it or transport it. And there's a label on it. And it says, My greatest work. Oh, oh this looks on the clown one? You said on the back of the clown picture it says, My greatest work? No, there's another There's another camera that's one. wrapped up. Oh. oh. Yeah. Benedict will definitely try and investigate that one. You, you open it. You unfold the canvas or the, the cloth that's over it. And you're looking at the back. And as you turn it around for a moment you're you're quite puzzled 
at what you're looking at, and you realize there is there's nothing. It's a blank canvas. Blank. Well, this is disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I don't uh, get it. I don't think anybody does. Artists, right? Artists. Artists, man. Uh, man. Uh, uh, can he... Can he maybe... He's got journalism art. Now it's going to suggest he might like to look into it a little deeper. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. What, you want to study the painting? Yeah, I want to study the painting. I mean, because if you want to sit down here in this basement thing. and just stare at the white canvas, then by all means. Um, I mean, you could also you could take it somewhere else and look into it, you know, or do something like that. Um, you guys also notice that Please. in the in the middle, or like kind of in the middle, or where with some of the other paints and stuff, and there's an easel set up and things like that. I mean, someone has been painting in here. You see a pile of uh, it looks like a pile of uh, cans, like uh, paint cans. And it has a note on it that says, uh, for Sammy to pick up. Bamini? Sammy. Oh, Sammy. S-A-M-I. We haven't come across a Sammy, have we? No. As a player, I want to see if that thing has, like, invisible ink on it or some shit. But as a character, I just don't think I would do that. Um, No, I think... Well, that's... I'm kind of going along the same... I think Hank would be thinking of the same thing. Um, wh- describe what's around there. So we have the paint can- cans with the poor Sammy on it. We have these three pictures, four now with the blank canvas. What else was in the room? Just other miscellaneous supplies. And the boxes that people had storage stuff in, right? That I find in anything with Abigail's? They're in one of the small okay. rooms, another small room. Okay. Mm. I think well, Benedict would actually take the painting home. Be like, yes, uh, I don't get it, but I, I think I will keep it because, you know what, I think part of what the artist was trying to communicate was for you not to get it, but then to think about why you're not getting it. And I, I do think I will take this one home. Do you have any problems with this? Dang, that's cheap. <laughs> Personally, I think it was the best piece, too. Uh, so <laughs> go ahead. Vinji nods thoughtfully like yeah yeah it was (laughs) god dang it this is art (laughs) god dang it if you guys look into some of the boxes if you go in there I mean it seems to be like this stuff isn't really secured I mean it's behind a locked door you look and you see that uh, there are a few but you do find a box with Abigail's name on it you open it up and it looks to be clothes um like nothing out of the ordinary and you find some other stuff from uh with some other people's names on it you find you know something with uh van with michelle van Vitt's name on it something with lewis post's name um it seems to be this is storage that people are using this area for storage you find more clothes you find like what looks like extra uh kitchen utensils and that kind of thing uh, you know, like maybe like some some out al- like some photo albums and keepsakes and things that maybe people didn't have room for uh, in their uh, actual things. Um, make me a search check. Anyone in particular? Anybody? Anybody who wants to look through the boxes? I'm definitely gonna look through Thomas. Thomas's. Right. Uh, by the way, for- I know. The, the little check box, do we set those or change them or anything for the session? If you are, uh, when we get to the end of the day, you guys are going to. End of the day. Gotcha. Yeah. Benji, uh, you got a 15 under 40. That's a success. All right. Hanged it too. You guys are both kind of looking through this stuff. Benedict is standing there with his blank canvas. Um, so proud. Looking down his nose at you as you dig through other people's things. Um, <laughs> And Looking for you, some panties, I can sniff. You don't oh like it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, you find some women's underwear. They are clean, though, so that's probably not what you. What you oh, these for. are worthless. <laughs> Throws them over his shoulder. <laughs> um, you find um, you find some stuff with Thomas Manuel, but it's it's unremarkable. Um. 
what you do find uh, between the two of you, who had the better success? I guess technically Hank had the better success here. So we'll say Hank finds it. Hank, you and Roger. Uh, Car- How the hell are we going to say this guy's name? Karan? No, actually, Benji. Benji's better success because low is better, right? Technically, higher but succeeding is better. The oh, way wow. it works out. Okay. So, oh, I didn't know that. Good to yeah. know. That's um, weird. So, Hank, you find in Roger uh, Caroon's, is how I'm going to say it, in, uh, in one of his boxes, you're opening some stuff up, and you find a, um, like, in and amongst things. And as you're, like, looking at this box, it looks like, like this box, all of Roger's stuff has tape over it. Like, it's been taped shut. This box looks like it's had the tape taken off and then put under another box. And as you open it, it looks to be closed and whatnot, and but as you open it and you're kind of right through them, out at your feet drops a floppy disk. What is it? Some kind of Lego? And I'll uh, pick it up and look at it. Um, <laughs> what? So, <laughs> I'm just joking. I know what a floppy disk is. Uh, is there any writing on it? Um, it's It says doesn't say anything. It just says private in pencil across the floppy disk. Uh, I showed there when I said, fellas, I think I found something. Uh, you know, he shows and he's like, this was in Roger's stuff on the first floor. Um, I'm going to keep That's hanging on to it. Maybe we can look at look into this later. Does anyone have a, a computer around here or at their apartment or something? That's you, probably, probably have, you probably have something, access to something at the Marshall's. Uh, Marshall's office. Well, uh, I just remembered I have one at the Marshall's office. Uh, if uh, <laughs> it's cool with everyone else, uh, we can go get those tools for uh, um, Benedict to rummage through people's mail, look at this floppy disk, and uh, contemplate over this blank canvas some more. No, golly, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> right. <laughs> That is a legitimate question. <laughs> um. All right. Yes. It's all Let's freaking go. right. Freaking right. All right. Uh, so, are you guys then? Are you guys gonna kind of like head, head out and go your separate ways, or what's the kind of intent right now? I kind of want to go yeah. to the, the marsh. Uh, oh, you, you. I was thinking we could all go no, to the marsh office. To- Okay. Benedict is sick and tired as a character. I want to. I want to hang out, but Benedict is taking well, it. Also. Okay. Uh, Benji's stomach grumbles loudly, and he's like, uh, "It's past my dinner time. I gotta go make some mac and cheese, of course, <laughs> and feed my well, cat, Alibaba." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll swing by the marshal's office and get these tools for. Uh, Benedict, and uh, look, maybe I'll take honestly, a peek at this. Honestly, I'm I'm pretty happy with what we've done today, and well, I just I meant would... for later, you know, so we have it on hand. Right. We'll probably come back tomorrow, though. We'll probably harass them some more tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, let's let's harass these poor citizens tomorrow. There's always <laughs> more harassment to be had. <laughs> And Benji's like, good work, team. And we've achieved nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say that. Dog I wouldn't say that, you guys. Uh, don't be don't so have. hard on us, Benji. This is how investigations go sometimes. And, uh, you know. No, no, no. Benji Benji is super optimistic about uh, it. Uh, okay. Dace is not. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I think we really cleared this apartment building out. I got a good feeling about this one. Except from the breaking and entering and the and the felonies, all right. You know, all right. So, uh, so first, let's go with uh, let's actually move with uh, Benedict. Where where does Benedict where's Benedict go? Benedict has a small apartment that he's renting next to Judy, his elderly neighbor. Small but nice. From- not he'd like to think so. Okay. Would really like nice to think think so. He would like people to think maybe. Uh, With this painting, I think price is gonna go up. Like, 
he's ashamed at how dingy it is because he he actually he doesn't have any sense of taste or any kind of sense of style or design so he just got something small and dingy so he goes home but he does have his little bird at home sitting there waiting for him little Margie right and I think he goes home uh, he won't really see Judy at this time because he's already to bed to him and usually he would have a bit of a sit down have a cup of tea with her in the evening um, but she's she's not out it's way past bed so I think he would go home feed uh, feed Margie the magpie a little bit talk to her because he can really be honest and confide in Judy Okay. And I think he'll also try and find a nice spot for his painting. All right. Uh, you um, you open the door, and as you do, you see the back of someone in your apartment. They are crouched over uh, Margie's cage, and they're mm. sprinkling bird feed in. Uh, and Guys, I, sir, who are you? It's you, sir. It Get stands up, me. and it is a. Uh, Jeremy, your PA. <laughs> oh, good God, Jeremy, you gave me it's, a heart attack. Like, oh, oh, Mr. Mr. Farthington, I'm so sorry. Oh, I am so sorry, Mr. Jesus. Farthington. You you said that, you know, that you might be late, uh, oh, and I just thought I would Jesus. come by, and I'm, I'm so sorry, Imbecile. Mr. Farthington. What are you doing here right now? I You gave me the key I, and told I, me... I, I to, don't care. I don't care. I'm I sorry, care. Mr. Farthington. But while you're here, please make me a cup of tea. And um, yes, sir. And then let yourself out. Uh, absolutely, sir. Um, uh, can I take that for you? And he Did you bring me any food? <laughs> Did you bring me food, Jeremy? Uh, 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 yes, sir. There is. Are you um... just here to feed my bird? N- no, sir. I'm. I'm here. I have. Am I, I put less important than the bird. No, no, Mr. Farthington. <laughs> Not at all, Mr. Farthington. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, so he he goes. He's like, I'll start that tea for you, Mister Farthington. Um, and the sandwich, please. And yes, yes, Mister Farthington. And he you goes into the like shit a, out of me. I think it's the least you could do. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mister Farthington, you're right. You're right, Mister Farthington. Uh, he goes he's actually, into the kitchen. He's um, really happy that he's there. He just oh, and, you, and, shit. and Margie, your your magpie, is it? Magpie. Is it, yeah. Is it Margie the magpie? Is just making that awful squealing sound that magpies make at every instance, whether they're happy, that's, sad, excited. That absolutely speaks volumes about this character that he has a fucking pet magpie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as uh, you see, and uh, you know, you hear Jeremy in there. It's like, uh, Mister uh, Mister Farthington, uh, got a, got several calls today uh, from. Uh, from the Daily Mail, uh, they were wondering um, how the uh, collaboration uh, was going uh, with the New York Post. Uh, is there anything particular you want me to tell them? Or uh... oh, Jesus, Jeremy, at this time of night, you want to talk about work? Okay. It's I'm fine. still on the yes. clock, Mr. Farthington. You said I don't sleep. <laughs> That's your choice, Jeremy. Don't make it your business my business. That's not my business. Uh, yes, but if you must... If you must, like, don't, 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 are you burning that toast? Check that oh, toast. Oh, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> scrambles back My around the corner. Uh, oh, just no, tell fine. them that things are in order. Are you, have, have you got something to write this down? You know how you are, Jeremy. Yes, yeah, I, I know how I am, sir. Uh, <laughs> please to... write this down. Just yes. please tell them that the investigations are going well. We've got this four people that we're interviewing tomorrow about the unusual um, increase in beggars in the park who seem to be dressing up for Halloween this year. We will get that story out as pretty standard stuff. Yes, sir. It sounds like it's going to be a great story, sir. I don't know why you're bothering me with this right now. I... I... Yes, yes, Mr. Farthington. Um, I... Mr. Farthington, you have a lot of mail piling up. I know you said you don't like me to open your mail, uh, but some of it looks kind of important. I mean, are you going to be around much uh, much tomorrow? Like, Jeremy, gonna be able I, to... I, I thought we discussed the mail story. Yes, you told me not to not to open your mail. You said it was private. Yes, but Jeremy, we also need somebody to filter my mail while I'm busy. 
with a very important story. So if okay. you could please do what I asked you last time and just filter out the important stuff for me. I I don't know how to do that without looking at it. Just don't open the unimportant stuff. Don't open the important ones. Just leave okay. those for you. Don't open he he's right. Don't open the important stuff. Uh all right, uh, here's your here's your tea, Mr. Frothington. Uh, he As said his tea nose down. is bleeding. <laughs> he set your tea down, <laughs> and it's exactly how you like it. Feels my next. Sandwich, please. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Frothington. He holds out his hand. That sandwich enters the hand. Bam. Oh, um, no. And he just stares, stares at the blank canvas whilst Margie is uh, screeching. Is there something... It's... Would you would you like to join me, Jeremy? Did you make yourself a cup of tea? No. <sighs> Jeremy. I... Am I... Jeremy, have I ever told tea? you that you make me feel very alone in the world? I am so sorry, Mr. Farthington. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus. Jeremy, at this point, I think you've done enough for one day. You should probably go home and tend to your plants. Okay. Yes. Uh, I will. I will be. I will check in with the office and get your mail. Uh, and only read the unimportant stuff tomorrow. Um. Uh. Will you be in to the office? Sorry, my dogs are barking. Not that bad. Sound that loud on our end. Okay. Um, he's like, so are you going to be in the office uh, tomorrow, sir? Yes, I'll swing by. We will check in tomorrow. As I'm sure other very important stuff will have popped up by then. Uh, okay. All right. I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow, sir. Um. Uh. Bye, Margie. And just <laughs> at him. <laughs> Slams uh, the door shut. shut. Yeah. So um. So what are you going to do with this, um... You're just going to spend the night drinking tea and eating your sandwich and just looking into the abyss of the painting? I think he uses Margie as a bit of a psychologist and he just talks about Jeremy all night, drinks his tea, really tells Margie how he feels about Jeremy, how really is really is an asset in my life, Margie. You know, you you understand me though, right? She, and she looks at him just her head and Tilts the head, yeah. he carries on as if she's understanding him he says right. you know I really do love him I really do love him but he's just a handful and eventually he uh, gets tired of his own talking and goes to bed okay are you gonna hang the painting it's just gonna sit on the floor near Margie's cage okay but um, invisible because he, he doesn't hang stuff it's just it's a mess so it's somewhere that he believes is within sight for him to drink and look at while he's uh, drinking his tea okay um so then what about what about Benji uh yeah Benji is just going home to his uh depressingly small apartment um it's clean though uh, he tries to take care of the place throws on a, a Howlin' Wolf record while he makes his mac and cheese, pours out some dry food for Alibaba. <laughs> um, Who is Alibaba? His cat. The cat, that's right. Is it like, is it really your cat, or is it just a cat that kind of comes and goes? No, no, no. Alibaba is his cat. The neighborhood okay. cat is named Breakfast. That's right. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so when you get in, you see there's a message on your machine. Uh, little lights is flashing as you enter the home. Well, that's probably not important. <laughs> Stirs <laughs> his mac and cheese. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. Uh, All yeah. right. Fuck the handler and let's move on. <laughs> Next thing. Uh, yeah, I'm going to check the answer machine. <laughs> oh. All right. Here, it's like, it's like, you know, beep. It's, it's like, Benji, Benjarino, Benj Machine, <laughs> dude, it's Skyler, man. Hey, uh, give me a call when you get in. Uh, just call my mobile, and uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna talk to you. Uh, it's got, it's got big blowout plans for this weekend. You got any plans? Nah, of course you don't. All right, hey, give me a call, man. Beep. Oh, Skyler, such a joker. Um. Yeah, he gets a. He calls Skyler's mobile. Yeah, uh, 
cell phones are not as big as they were in the early 90s or late 80s but still it's they are very expensive uh and not everyone has one at this point uh so you you call skylar and it's kind of hard to hear him it sounds like he's at where he always is you know some party you hear is like Hey, hey, ben- Benji! Hey, yes, it's Benjarino! Benjarino! Hey, man, what are you doing? Oh, nothing much, Sky Dog. Ah, oh, yeah, man. Hey, listen, there is this huge thing tomorrow. It's uh, tomorrow night, uh, and I want my number one wingman. I want Benjarino know. there. I've got a lot of writing to do on this dissertation. Benji! Here. Benji! Come on! Well, all right. I suppose I can take one night off. Benji, like, dude, this is gonna. This is not like. Look, I know I've dragged you to a lot of these warehouse parties, and you know, and and you know, and, and grand openings and stuff. This is gonna be like nothing else. Do you understand me? You know, I, I got <laughs> one word for you. I got one. I got two words for you. You ready? You ready? Is it one or two? It's two. <laughs> all right, I'm ready. European models. That's all I got to say, man. You get yourself stoked, and I will see you. I'll be by to pick you up at six. Oh, good golly. How, <laughs> right. how, how's your daughter? I, I, I I'm not thinking about that right now, Benji. It's not that space I'm in. You're really fucking tell, harsh my vibe. Tell little Cassandra, I said, hey, I hope she's doing all right. Um, I mean, she's with her mom. Uh, it's... Anyway, Benji, Benjamino, I, hey, I, uh, I'll uh, see you tomorrow. I'll pick you up. I'm picking you up at six, brother. You ready? You get fucking ready. European oh. models. I said it. Oh. I said it again. Okay. All right. All right. Love you, brother. I, I, I love you too, Sky. All right. All right. Cap- Capify Delta. That's right. Uh, but, well, I was gonna sing our fight song, but I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, and yeah, he finishes his mac and cheese and fires up his outdated Macintosh and starts working on his thesis or his dissertation. Yeah. And that dissertation, it's, uh, what was it again? It was like, it was the ethereal and the blues. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Doesn't have a, it's as yet untitled, but yeah, the subject is how the, the crossover of the uncanny and the blues. Yeah. And the funny thing is like, you were actually told by some Delta Green people that this paper needed to not contain anything true, you know, about the unnatural. So they've really kind of put a hamper on your own personal pursuits of your your academic life. Yeah, I think Benji would be writing two separate dissertations, like the real one and the one that he's being forced to publish. Gotcha. Yeah, because you had an interesting encounter in Clark's Clarksdale. Yes, so, Clarksdale. Yeah. All right. So Benji's just gonna slam out some work until uh, until he uh, gets too tired, or uh, he probably has a pretty rigid schedule. Writes for an hour and a half and goes to sleep around ten. Okay. Pretty pretty tame stuff. Alibaba curls up on his chest. Yeah. Uh. Hank, Just you and me, Ellie. <laughs> Hank he... Elliot, U.S. Marshal. Joke, mind me. Does the sanity replenish after doing good things at home, or is it just as a The sanity just not replenished. Sanity is typically only is recovered uh, in home scenes and the stuff where uh, the in-between mission stuff. Don't worry about replenishing sanity, John. Why are you worried about that? <laughs> I'm more curious. <laughs> Asking for a friend. Says are the you... guy that brought the a blank painting that is the psychopath's best work to his <laughs> home. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, Hank Ellis. Um, so, he's going to head to the office late i don't imagine there's anyone around or is there he's gonna go i mean the, the marshal's office. office there's always something going on um so there's probably yeah. there's definitely security and maybe there's functionaries and stuff they were kind of doing some stuff there are a few agents here. you might see another marshal who's like at their computer 
typing up a report or something they see you and just like hang as you go in out of there um he sits down at his desk and uh <clears throat> you know he's a, a ways away from georgia and he calls up his uh mama who's taking care of the five kids his the five kids grandparents are taking care of them and he calls up uh <laughs> he says hello mama Wow, that's weird. My phone just started ringing. Oh, <laughs> hello! <laughs> wow, that was. Um, uh, yeah, your uh, your mother and your your mother's not really one of your bonds, is she? Well, she's it's interested. she's taking care of the five sons, right? You the know, five while sons. He's out of How uh, old are these he, sons? I I got the impression they were because Hank is forty five. Yeah, they're between the ages of thirty five and seven. <laughs> Okay, so she's not probably not taking care of all of them. Well, they're all staying with her, as far as I know. Uh, okay, <laughs> they're one uh, contiguous unit. I say, hey, Mama, just call on to talk to my boys. Uh, can you put John on the phone? Yeah, Ed. oh, Hank, Ed, about that. Uh, you, you know, uh, well, you know, Marjorie. You know, she, she wasn't doing too good. Uh, right, right. Yeah, John, John went up there with her. Uh, I, I, I don't think she's long for this world. John's awful, awful broke up about it. His mama, you know, poor oh, thing. Lord. And you Lord know, you know that Marjorie has been, uh, you know that Marjorie has been battling breast cancer, um, mm. and things haven't been looking good. You don't really keep up with her. Uh, Hank doesn't. I don't think Hank really gets along many with his exes. Hence, why none of them are his bonds. No. Right. And uh Hell yeah, he he's he's gone up there. He should be up your way. He said he might stop in and see you. Well that is wonderful and I look forward to that very much. Uh tell John I'm thinking about him. And uh what about Jonathan? Is he around? <laughs> oh, he's he's around here somewhere. Uh I'll I'll get him for you. <laughs> You, you talk to your other son, Jonathan. So John's the eldest at 35, we've now established. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you have a list of names? To... Well, it's, well, no, there is there is absolutely a list of names. It is, uh, let's see, the, the sons are John, Jonathan, Joshua, James, and Junior. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Hank uh, speaks to everyone. Who I believe them. are all products from different women. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Good uh, God. I'm just, well, I just wanted to t- tell you, Jonathan, keep uh, swinging that bat. I know you're doing good at baseball practice, son. Dad, I'm 25. Keep <laughs> up the good work. Uh, is Joshua around? <laughs> yeah, he's here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to Joshua? Joshua, I love you, boy. How you doing? How's that art coming along? Your paintings, your you doing Dad, good. Dad, I'm not doing painting now. I'm doing <laughs> I'm, I'm doing sculpture now, Dad. Oh, how did I forget? <laughs> Whatever. I love you, son. Put James on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad. James, where's Junior? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, he's right here, Dad. Put Junior on I, the phone, I, James. I, I, I don't want to hear really another word, James. No. Fair. I got a blue <laughs> ribbon. They said I'm doing really good. <laughs> I never liked the color blue. Now, where's Junior? <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay. And, you know, you hear the your seven-year-old son, Junior. Uh... Hi, Dad. Hey, Junior. <laughs> you know you're my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> James is my least favorite, but don't tell James. I just have to oh, talk to him to keep whoops. things even. <laughs> whoops! Can I have a bag on that one, Dad? I love you, boy. I can forgive you. I can't stay mad at you. Y'all have a good night, you hear? Night, night! Night, night. Um, <laughs> he hangs up the phone. Fantastic. By the way, having a 35 year old son doesn't really make sense if you're 40. You're right. It's probably like <laughs> 33. He's adopted. Um, <laughs> uh, um, 
he sits back and he puts in the floppy disk. Okay. <laughs> uh, you put in the floppy disk and um, you you find that there is a uh, there's a there's a file that also says private and then there is a um, a Word document. They have Microsoft Word and 95? Is it already a thing? It just what came out with Microsoft 95. Yeah. So uh so you're on a you're on a word machine, probably not running ninety five because it just came out and you work for the federal oh, yeah. government. So uh sure. but you pop it in and so there's the file, there's the folder that says private, and then there is a uh, there's a file that is labeled um uh Night C which you know is Robert Caroon's uh, it's the now it makes it's the sense. book series that yes he's... I understand now I just had to see it spill um so there's a file named Night C and then there's one that's private yeah I'm sorry um, I'm sorry it's not titled Night Seas it's titled Night Floors oh my bad. this isn't the book he was talking about uh, I click on it and read first paragraph or something or see what's in there, I guess. First. It seems to be a a play, or a, not a play. It's a story. Um, it's a story that is written um, like, and it has characters that you recognize their names. There's Roger. There's Thomas. And there's uh, Michelle, Abigail. It seems to be Uh-oh. people from Weird. the apartment complex um and yeah it's and lewis he's there too um there's you're kind of reading through it and it just seems to be some story uh talking about the people all you know getting together and you know different interactions they've had um there's some other characters as well though um you see um mr castain uh, who's referred to as the night manager. You also see references to the super or the supervisor. It seems like, you know, like maybe like a landlord kind of figure. You see a mark. And you see something else that's... Well, actually, give me a uh, give me a search roll. How much are you going to get into this? 41. 41 under 50. You're going through and you're trying to find something relevant. I don't know if word processors and computers are Hank's biggest thing, but you know, you scour. You we'll say that you stay there pretty late. That this probably takes you into like late into the evening. You're the last person in the office. I imagine there's like one of those ninety cubicle farms, like that's like the all the office spaces of the US Marshals. The last one who's got out, he's like it's like, see you later, Hank. Alrighty. Take it easy. And you're just there reading through this. Mm -hmm. You see something a little bit you see something a little bit disturbing that kind of catches your eye. Um, it talks about that everyone, a bunch of these characters, are all in a uh, a, a smoking lounge, is what it's, it sounds like. And you know, you're just you're flipping through the pages, scrolling down. You see, it's a, that uh, that the character Mark enters in and uh, says uh, he says to everyone, everyone's sitting around like smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. He says. Well, Abigail's gone. And someone, uh, and Thomas responds very curtly with, and? And Mark says, I miss the kid. Michelle uh, then responds with, uh, her dad, that pig, came around. He doesn't like you, Mark. No one likes you. Anyway, she ran off that salesman, and everybody knows it. Mark responds with, fuck you, you cunt. Uh, then you hear Thomas. Thomas says, "Come on, guys, come on, let's." And right at that time, they're interrupted by the barking of a dog, and that they all turn as they hear the sounds of steps coming towards the door of the parlor. And Mark, uh, Mark shouts out, "Who is that?" Everyone stops to listen, and there's no response at first. And Michelle responds with, "Like, who could be? Who is that? Who could that be?" And then it stops with interfederal agents. 
What? This is trippy. And the way the federal <laughs> are described. Very, very familiar. Uh, please roll me a sanity yeah, check. Yeah, this is creepy. Oh, no. Um, I just hit the sanity points. Yep. But, okay. Success. All right. You take zero loss. Um, but... Um, so Hank, well, this is at least Hank takes off his hat, his cowboy hat, and just starts spanning himself. He says, "What in the world is going on here?" Uh, that's trippy for sure. Uh, what the fuck? Okay, um, okay, but let me get this. Someone's called Mark, came in and said that Allison's gone, and Michelle uh, said Abigail's gone. Then Michelle said she ran off with a salesman. Yes. And you see that through this, there is referenced a few times a salesman. Um, it's not like a complete story. It seems to be a right. story that's taken up like in the middle. Um, that's super true. Something about her, her dad. Shell yeah. said something about Abigail's dad. Uh, Cause he's a cop. That, that pig came around, and that no one likes him. She was telling Mark that no one likes him. Okay. She was basically dissing Mark, saying that nobody likes yeah. you, Mark. Do we think Mark is the stand-in for Roger? Is that the Roger character? No, they it's were unclear. all there. It seems like Roger just might not be in this scene. Because okay. he's in some yeah. other scenes. But this is the most interesting one. I mean, Mark sounds a lot like Agent Marcus. Uh, but he's like basically like our real like in-story handler. So I don't know if that really makes sense or I'd go that route. That's trippy though, for real. Um, it's as if he was writing this story just before, or the story was like being written in a fictional way right before we came into the apartment or some like weird obs- uh, version of something. I don't know. Okay, and that was, was one. It was in the basement in the storage. Mm-hmm. And it was in cool, the basement. Cool, cool, cool. Is that right? I missed that part then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What the fuck? We should have searched for secret doorways. Whoever's the making basement. those notes down there, I just corrected something that I didn't explain okay. well. That Mr. Castain is the night manager. Okay. Fantastic. Mark, Thank there's you. also ran off there's also himself. the super is also referenced as someone separate. And what, say cool. the name of this story again. He calls it the night floors. The night floors. Um, all right, this is super trippy. Um, uh, and there's that other folder as well. Yeah, it just says private. It just says private. All right, let's open that. It's password protected. Uh, he types in night C. It fucking opens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you kidding me? Nope. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. I swear to God, I haven't looked up anything about this. No, I got you. I got you. Well, I mean, I would have called that too. That's oh, yeah. I mean, it's not... well, it's like it, it's like I imagine. Like I'm imagining Hank sitting there. He's like he stops for a second and goes, and like I imagine Hank types like this. Yeah. Like he doesn't type well. You know, he types with this with his two <laughs> fingers. He's not sees click and it opens he goes it's like fuck passwords he's like he's like rookie passwords he's like he's like computer hackers ain't got nothing on Hank Ellis <laughs> you can't keep so, anything away from a marshal so the actual name of the book is night floor but the story night C is the, the password, password for this, for this yes, protective night C document. is Roger Cal- Calhoun's uh, his book series that made him semi-famous. Okay. Um. So when you open it, um, you see that there are like somewhere between fifty and seventy files. Um, each one is like, and each one has a different name. Um, you whoops, I think uh, we lost John. Um, so just cl- he just closed his. Um, camera so it cut off yeah oh okay carry on okay um shit when you do that it fucks up the stream uh video but it's okay oh sorry it, it'll buff out um uh, but anyway so 
I was saying, like, there's there's like there's a whole bunch of them. Like I said, easily like fifty to uh, fifty to seventy of these damn things. As you are looking at them, they all have different names to them that appear to be um, like the names of like they're like weird artsy short story names like what the other hand did and the silver lining and things like that there's just a, there, it's kind of all over the place well um i think hank is uh, i mean he passed a sanity check but that definitely you know how could it not startle him slightly right. um he's going to spend as much time as he can without before falling asleep at the office going through them okay you um you click on the first one and you click on the file it opens and it's empty except for a single letter s sammy i don't know what else would be s okay what was the name of this story we'll say this one was smiggins rule smiggins rule what if the rest of the text is in white font? White text. Did y'all ever do that? <laughs> like in college, like if you had to hit a certain word count, just put a bunch of gibberish letters in white at the bottom of the page. <laughs> no, I know. I never, I don't think I I never did that. Surprise. I've never even thought of that. <laughs> yeah, that's good, though. Um, okay. He backs out and goes to the next story. All right. Uh, the next letter is uh, same thing. Everything's blank except for one letter, M. I guess he continues doing this. You continue doing this. I assume you're writing these down, right? Or something. Okay. Uh, you go through different thing. Uh, Venus's daughter, the demon in the veil, the stranger in the village, death of the invisible pygmy. Uh, all this random, <laughs> like all these, all these different things. Every single one, one single letter. As you write them all down, it eventually comes out to. A, and there's 64 of these files and it spells out smooth is the hand that makes the world and steady is the mind that grasps it this boy is weird as hell <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the takeaway <laughs> uh okay um can I roll on a cult yeah and this will be the last roll before we'll like get back with the gang and go to yeah. sleep I probably won't hit this cause it's like one of my lowest things Sticks. That is a under six under ten. Nice. What? Hell yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. I don't know how Hank has this occult knowledge, right? Um, you you're thinking about it, and you're thinking you're like you're like oh god, I feel like I've I've heard this. Um, what is it? The it's something you can't quite remember. It's on the tip of your tongue, like what it's from. Um, and you're like it's it's this weird like this occult book that's been around for a really long time and this like is like a passage from it and you don't know like why you even know this um, but it's on it's on the tip of your tongue it's like it's it's a it's they're not English word it's like what is it ours like A-R-S like ours Goetia ours Goetia what, however you say it, I'll write it in the chat in roll twenty. And you're like, it's from like a, it's like a famous line from a, uh, from a, a, an occultic text. And what was the quote? Smooth is the hand that. Smooth is the hand that makes the world, and steady is the mind that grasps it. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know how we would play that like realistically as character. Maybe it was. He remembers seeing it jumbled on something in his craft that he was rummaging through in the basement. Not the actual text, but like the words or something. I don't know how we'd actually play that, but okay. You seem to remember, maybe there's like you you were talking to a um, a a peer, another U.S. Marshal, about some really bizarre case he was on, and he was talking about the uh, you know, this weird cult that they found, and they were you know, like these, like really, like a probably like just like a bunch of posers doing a bunch of shit, and they had this book, you know, they talked about. It was in like the the file, the report, yeah. the sentence. Smooth you, uh, as a hand that makes that's like some shit that would be said in Dune. Yeah, you're on your you're on your way out of the building, and you see there's a guy there. Uh, he's like the 
the uh, like security guy. He he says he's like he's like oh uh, uh uh Ellis Agent Ellis. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, Do I know there's you? A, there's somebody here uh, for you. Um, said he was your son. Uh, he he left. He waited for a while. Um, I he uh, he left this for you. He gives you a piece of paper, a note. Um, it looks like John came by and was going to try to see you here at the office, but you spent all night upstairs working. Um, he says, and the note just says, it's like, Dad, this is John. Mom's dead. Need to talk to you. Call me at this number, and it's a number. It's like a, a hotel number. Okay, uh, it's pretty heavy for, um, Hank, even though he didn't get along with her, you know, it's, yeah. it's only he had a close relationship with Dodd. It's like, oh, shit. And even, I mean, he's like, I'm guessing, like, pissed tired right now, but he musters up and tries to call the number. You call the number, um, it's like 10 o'clock at night, 10 11 o'clock at night, and you hear, you know, you hear fumbles, it's, ah, hello, hello, hello? Ah, oh, son, it's your daddy. Hey. What's going hey. on? Hey, Hank. Uh, listen. Um. Um. Uh, mom. Uh. Mom passed. Uh. Oh this morning. My goodness. And uh. And this afternoon, you know, we were, you know, at. I know you guys weren't close, but uh. But yeah, like, so I I came into town uh, a day or two ago. You know, I was with her, and but anyway, I was talking to the lawyer, and you're still in her will, and you know that's you know you know that's not really what she wanted. Like, I it just hadn't been updated since you guys were together, and so I, I just need you to come sign some papers, um, you know, so we can fix that, um, just so we can get all that stuff handled. I mean, it's not like she had anything, but. You know, like you're the primary on there, and so yeah, I just need you to. Are you busy tomorrow, or are you, are you busy at eleven in the morning tomorrow? Uh, I'm sorry to hear all this, John. Uh, of course I can come by and sign the documents tomorrow. Uh, get some good rest, and we'll we'll address this first thing t- uh, around eleven tomorrow. He gives you the address of where to meet him. Yeah, he's like, all right. Uh, but yeah, thanks, Hank. I'll see you there. The boy didn't even call me daddy. I must stole on the phone. All right, good night. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, he hangs the phone. All right. All right, and uh, and Hank goes home. It's the it's the hay. And that is it for this episode. As the team is just beginning to uncover some of the strangeness in the McAllister building while trying to uh, desperately keep their lives from falling apart. Thank you for joining us today. We would really love to hear from you over on our Reddit where we have an introduction thread for folks to let us know where they're listening from and kind of what they think. Give us feedback and whatnot. Uh, The links to all of our socials and stuff, they're in the episode description uh, below, uh, including our Patreon if you'd like to buy the team a cup of coffee. And don't worry, uh, we will split that cup of coffee four ways uh, as even as possible Uh, again thank you for coming along and we will see you next time stay safe stay sane bye